My name is Dave Howell. I'm the president of Capital City Paving in Victoria, BC. We are an asphalt supplier, uh, aggregate supplier. We also are a receiver of fill and hydrovac waste. Probably about 15 years ago, we saw the advent of hydro trucks looking for a place to, to dump their spoil. We went over to the UK to look at Terex washing systems. During the conversation up at the factory, I said, well, how about hydrovac trucks and hydrovac material? Could you wash that? I think within, it was a matter of, of, of a month and Terex came back and said, we think we can do something. Terex Washing Systems has decades of experience in modular wash plant design. The VAC Recover plant is an adaptation and innovative new wash plant for processing hydrovac excavated materials and generating revenue from what once was waste. My name is Dave Boudwin. I work for Capital City Paving. I'm a superintendent. Before we had the hydrovac plant, we used to take hydrovac and dump it on a paved area where the, the liquid would flow to a pond and then we would pick up and manage the gravel that we are now saving would just go to a landfill and be mixed with our fill. The material out of the hydrovac truck, it's, it's, a, it's messy, right? It's hard to manage. Now, that material, after it's gone through the hydrovac plant, 80% of it is recoverable, saleable material. We don't know what materials are coming to us on the hydrovac trucks. Sometimes they're all sand, sometimes they're all rock, sometimes they're all mud. This plant has been very good at separating the rock at, from the sand. We have two different products, one a sand and one which is a rock, which we split into two different categories. And the byproduct of that is a thickened sludge. Uh, the percentages on that are very close to 40% sand, 40% rock products, and 20% thickened sludge. This is our receiving hopper where we back the trucks in and we'll offload their load to start the process. It takes approximately 15 minutes for a truck to back in, discharge its load, clean out and leave. We're getting about 10 truckloads a day. They range from three tons to 12 tons. So we can average probably three to four trucks an hour This is our receiving hopper. We were up a minute ago up top. It drops down here into our dewatering screen where the, the aggregate rock comes off and goes up the conveyor belt. All of the sand and silt that is in our chamber below is pumped up through this cyclone here where it separates the sand from the silty water. All of the sellable sand that goes through the cyclone is dropped into this dewatering screen, which creates a drip-free sand that is taken by conveyor up to a stockpile for sale. The dirty water is then pumped out through the top of the cyclone, comes down into a separate chamber. This is where our silts and clays are washed out to in a vertical shaft pump. It is then pumped up through into the deep cone thickener where the flocculant is added on its way. Approximately 60% of the, the, the waste in the back of the hydrovac truck is water. After it has been flocked in the deep cone thickener, that water is recovered and it goes into our clean tank. And what we do with the hydrovac trucks, we supply them water to fill up their water tanks before they go to the next site. So it's sort of a, a closed system that way. We've got some good support that's fairly local. We have Foreman Equipment, which is over on the mainland. We also have Andrew with Terrace Washing System, who's just in Washington State. When we've needed them, they've showed up and they've helped us get through our problems. So Foreman Equipment, we really know our area, our territory, and our customers' needs. Terex Washing knows how to wash difficult and hard to handle materials. And by bringing us both together, our customers get what they need, quality equipment that does the job with service and backup on a local level. Modular wash plants and wash plants in traditional applications are always going to be part of the picture in construction aggregates. And we are aligning ourselves to be 
the best provider of the plants for processing these unorthodox feeds. This is what the future is going to be. Right now, um, you know, this, this type of material is basically just dumped on farmland and forests and wherever anybody really can, can dispose of it. The quarries in, in not just in our area, but a lot of areas are, uh, are being depleted. There'll be other quarries, but they're gonna be further and further away from the, from the market. There's a cost to be involved with that, and there's also a carbon footprint involved with that. So if we can recover materials in the metro area where we're working and repurpose them and reuse them, I mean, that's where we should be going.